This Nashville Predators broadcast is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz of Nashville. By Bridgestone. Your journey, our passion. By Fifth Third Bank. Stop by Fifth Third Bank to learn how you can be the seventh man. Fifth Third Bank. Member FDIC. And by Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt. Welcome inside the XL Energy Center. Predators in Minnesota Wild on a Saturday afternoon in the early post-holiday period. And let's get you inside so Terry can tell you about the Toyota starting goaltenders. All right, Pete and Stunning, you're off the bat. I'm going to say the word off the bat. This afternoon, it's not a night game, by the way. Pecorine, yeah, this gentleman has 27 wins, the most of any goalie in the NHL. That's why Coach Lavalette's starting him. And the home team coming right back with Nicholas Backstrom. And this gentleman has only played one game in the last three weeks. So you'd often think that, or maybe think that the Predators might want to test him. Yes, what would you as a coach be telling, let's just say, for example, the late 80s Calgary Flames, if you were playing a team that had somebody in this situation? Throw everything you have at them as often as you can and introduce yourself to them. All right, we are underway, and Zach Parisi is out there to start the game with Eric Halla in the middle, and on the right side, Thomas Vanek. Boleyn got bumped back in the net. Predators trying to put the early pressure on as Fisher went out in front. It's Fisher between Beck, back in the lineup today, and Colin Wilson. Here's Parisi on the change, and he got a quick shot. Had Rene recoiling very quickly to see where that might have gone. Halla with a shot that is sticked away by Rene. So the early test there, and the puck comes across and caromed for Taylor Beck to chip out. Ryan Suter tried to send it back in. The Koivu line is out now. Pominville, Zucker flanking him. Here comes the Predators' number one line, and the puck is turned over off the stick of Philip Forsberg. Down the Predators' defensive right side. Stepping up into the position vacated by Ryan Ellis is Seth Jones. And one thing you have to expect, Pete, from this Minnesota team is that they're going to come out hard and fast because they have to get some wins. They're sort of struggling lately, and Coach Yo says, you know what? Get a good start. We can just build off it right off the bat. And on the four-check early, Minnesota's doing just that. Charlie Coyle picks up the loose puck at the blue line. Bodies are tumbling all over the place. And that pass tipped just to the Minnesota line with a second try. Rivero sends it in deep. Brodeen back of the Minnesota net. Long pass through center. No icing. That is waved off. And the puck taken away. And meter rider a backhander. Stopped by Rene. The rebound comes down and Fontaine in pursuit. Whoa. Little, little sloppy, Pete, in their own zone. Nashville counting on Pecorini again to make a big save on Niederreiter, walked in untouched. And the puck then stopped by Rene and jabbed to the side. A follow-up by Suter goes wide. And a new defense pairing for Nashville out, Volchenkov with Bartley. Puck given back by Kelly Yarncroke, who breaks up to take the pass. Yarncroke right side the shot, stick save is made there. First shot on net for the Nashville Predators. Well, Pete, we gave them a fair warning. He said Minnesota's going to come at you. They're going to come out. Mike Yo is not a very happy coach, as we saw in, in a practice video oh. of him on the ice. Yo. I was somewhat convinced he was unhappy, yes. I was somewhat jealous that I couldn't have one of those tirades when I coached. <laughs> oh, you did. Oh, did I? Yes. Okay. We have okay. video. <laughs> I hate video sometimes. The OC comes back to retrieve. In on the right side ahead of Stahlberg and played back out by Justin Falk. Falk sent in off the end board and uh, gotten there by Nate Prosser as we come to Terry Crisp and his four keys to the game. All right, Fred, strong four check. Get on them. They had 44 goals scored against them in their last 11 games. They're fragile. Shot volume, we told you. We alluded to the fact that Backstrom, who only played one game in three weeks, get the puck on them. And this is the one that Coach Lavillette gave us. I want a hard 60 minutes from my hockey club. No fooling around and taking a period off. Let's go the full tilt this afternoon. 
and sliding back into the zone. And this will be an icing against Nashville as we go to our injuries and scratches presented to you by Vanderbilt Sports Medicine. Out for Nashville, James Neal, Ryan Ellis, Eric Nystrom, coach's decision on Mark Arcabello. For Minnesota, goaltender Darcy Kemper, defenseman Keith Ballard, forward Miguel Grant, Marcos Candela, and former predator Jonathan Blum on B, along with winger Justin Fontaine. And Pete, looking at that lineup, Neil, Nystrom, and Ellis, going to be a good test for this hockey club to see who can step up because those are big shoes, big holes you have to fill. That is the test here today. As Bennett gets it back to the point, that shot deflected wide. Suter picks up. He puts one right on. Rebound swatted at. Rene got the left skate out of the pad. Brodeen puts it behind the Nashville goal. Pulled away from Yossi by Halla, but it comes onto the board. Wilson tried to make the play. Brodeen lost it. Colin Wilson carries ahead. Wilson chips in versus Brodeen and Suter. Behind the net, pulled out of the trapezoid, Wilson in front by Fisher and the score. Wilson dug it out, Mike Fisher backhanded it home, and at 4-0-1, the Predators are up 1-0. And how often, Pete, have you seen this? The other team just keeps hemming you, hemming you, scoring chance, scoring chance. Down come the Nashville Predators, puck in deep, and the big fella Wilson gets it in there, does some good forechecking, stays with it. Beck takes a man out. And Mike Fisher said, listen, you two guys go behind the net. I'll stay out front and give it to me. And it's exactly what they did. So great combination. Wilson deep. Back playing some uh, uh, blocking. And Fisher finishes it off. So seven goals for Mike Fisher playing 20 games. That, of course, let's do the easy math, projects to a 28-goal output over the 80-game schedule. Wilson. The puck comes over right side, taken up by Beck. Beck was able to chip it in. Spurgeon onto the board, and that caromed out toward Fisher, but could not hold it. Koivu to Zucker, and now Pominville chopped away, but a follow-up attempt is deflected as Spurgeon took the shot. Fisher steers it in. It is on the line change. Forsberg going after it, trying to turn the puck over. If he can, went right back up the board. Given back, Schrader, and now from the right wing side, Fanning trying to dump it in was Charlie Coyle. Coyle almost literally tied up there as he came through against <laughs> Ribeiro. Behind the net, looked up the wall. Bartley coming down after it, and it deflects out to center. Coyle thought he might have a bit of a break there. Now he passes to the right wing, where it's chipped in. Niederreiter couldn't get there in time. Volchenkov's pass just wide, and deflects off Suter and Ribeiro going behind the Nashville goal. Five and a half gone. First period, Pete Weber with Terry Crisp from St. Paul, Minnesota this afternoon. And right off the bat, as we thought would happen, the Minnesota Wild are not a happy team. They're, they want to get back in the race. They've been hammered lately, and they are coming out full bore. All guns shooting. Suter down the left side. Going back is Volchenkov, and we have the icing here. 5.54 gone in the first period. They'll bring this one back into the Minnesota end. Or they're calling the offside, excuse me. 5.54 gone. And it's 1-0 beat simply because Colin Wilson, the big fella, what he does so well, he gets the puck deep, stays with it. Watch back. He comes in, takes a man out, and Mike Fisher says, I'll stay out of traffic. I'll stay in the slot. And as Wilson is so good at doing, finding the open man, he found his buddy Fisher. 1-0. And it's a six. solid four check. I like that pretty solid four check. Yes. Got a good ring to it, Pete. When it's, your, when it's your team. You like to see it practiced as well, yes. Yeah. Fisher able to flip it in over Suter. Taylor back, throws it right across the front of the goal mouth. Yossi follows up with a shot. And as it comes down, it is trapped against the ice by Nicholas Backstrom. Well, that surprises me. Yossi way down near their net. Exactly. <laughs> that probably surprises a lot of people. 1-0 Nashville here in the first. 
Right off the bat, scoring chances. Freezy, first shift, first 30 seconds. Off the wing. Rene to the rescue. Niederreiter walks off the boards. He comes in. Again, Pecorine to the rescue. Matt Cook, 24. Not done yet. Early in the period. Bingo. Scoring chances. But other end. Fisher. Down he comes. First good scoring chance. Go figure. One nothing. Don't Match. try to figure. Okay. Don't figure. Just enjoy it. Forsberg with a shot and a whack at the rebound for Smith right off the draw. Yossi carries back of the net. Pulls off and that shot into traffic. Bounced away. Getting in the way of it all was Halla. Jay Weber in the Nashville zone. Bannock bearing down on him. Yossi with the pass banked and played out Forsberg. Shooter for Minnesota. And down the right side, Spurgeon. Rene comes out of his net. An easy pass, but Ribeiro then fires it quickly back to Weber. Stopped by Suter at the line, and now Ribeiro steals away. Suter goes behind the net, trying to make amends. Brodeen went up the right side with it, and now Suter fills in the lane. He sends in Zucker. Zucker trying to go wide, and that shot of backhander covered up by Rene. So again, Pecorine making sure, and head coach Laviolette, and yes, as we mentioned at the top of the show, he and his staff will be going to the All-Star Game this year in Columbus. And as I mentioned, Pete, it is a feather in their caps to all of the coaching staff that work so hard. And Coach Laviolette, the class that he does have, said, you know what? Yes, we're proud. The players are proud. He says the whole organization. That's a reflection on him. So thank you, Coach Laviolette, for the organization for that. Okay. Accolades for you and I, Pete? Yeah, I certainly hope so. How many yeah. goals, how many goals <laughs> you scored? <laughs> none. <laughs> Absolutely none. Called a few. That's yeah, certainly boy. more this year than last. Well, at least the passion in your call. Yeah. Flipped around and Stahlberg watches as it comes over off the stick to Stahlberg of Bork. Wound down again for Bork by Gostad. Bork leaves. Seth Jones steps up, pursued by Koivu. And it bounced there as he tried to set up a one-timer for Gostad. Hey, Jones had the right idea, Pete. He had good control crown. Heads up all the way looking. He found Gostad. Just couldn't get the stick or the puck on his stick. Or Gostad had a good score. Here's Zucker and chopped away from him by Seth Jones. Jones, he wasn't going for the head shakes. No. He can say, no, I'm going to play you. I'm not going for the head shakes. To the point, Volchenkov lines it up. Rebound almost left there, but Backstrom covers up. Ole Jokinen looming away on top. So 1-0 right now, Pete, thanks to Fisher, Colin, Wilson, and Beck going to work on him out there. And this gentleman here, the big body, Jokinen, coaching staff saying if he ever breaks out, breaks loose, man, look out. Get that scoring touch goal. Matt Cullen, the Minnesota native, stepping in for the draw. To the right of Backstrom, and Coyle pulls it back to the side of the circle. Bartlett puts it back behind the net. Raider just tapped it. Coyle comes out with it. Niederreier breaks ahead, and that pass missing the mark from Prosser. Behind the net, pulled away by Anton Volchenkov. Young Crook tipped it out. Comes back. Volchenkov stick tied up by Schrader. And we have a penalty going to be called for interference. And it comes at 8.48. So, head coach Lavalier looking up the clock saying, okay, let me take a look, see what he did. And so Volchenkov is, is sitting down. And we'll take a look and see... Oh, yeah, you're not. Football, that's a good play. Hockey, not so good. Football's a good play if your quarterback is about to go earthward, get pulverized. So power play goes to the wild. The Predators get the face off, but they'll do the face off all over again, perhaps reset the clock. Minnesota on the power play, 24th in the league. Zach Parise leads them with five man advantage goals. Parise will start out flip-flopped on the wings with Vanek. And as the Predators get the draw and send it back down ice. So with the injury to Eric Nystrom, Gabriel Bork has become the partner on the first penalty-killing duo. 
Backed up with a suitor by Koivu. Oh, and when you're talking win. penalty killers, Pete. And as the coaching staff, usually what you want to have is good speedsters. Mm -hmm. well, whoa! As the puck bounced <laughs> away in front. Sorry, no, Evil Knievel got himself back out between the pipes. To finish my thought, Gabriel Bork does have speed. And when he uses it, he's a good penalty killer. And that's enough for my heart this afternoon. No more of those. Yeah. yeah I've had difficulties with that working here. As the puck yeah, reflects up. I shouldn't bring that up. You're dead on right, yeah. partner. Well, don't say it that way. Oh, here's back again. down to Suter. Right side, Parisi. Suter. Tied up. And Yarncroft came out to challenge. And now Callie Yarncroft trying to burst back after the puck. Jason Pominville there ahead of him. Fisher on now in the penalty kill. Going by Matt Cullen, breakaway from Niederreiter. He's in deep, they can wrap around. Goes back now to the right side and foil. Niederreiter gets it back, fires, knocked down in front. And it comes off the keister of Matt Cullen. Whoa. I got that just in the side, Pete, real quick. That would not have been a breakaway if this ice hadn't been so good over here. This ice is yes. slick and fast today. Now, probably the, the temperature outside has a lot to do with it. Yes. But that's why this first period is fast-paced. The ice is very good out there. And the backhander deflects high from the top of the right circle. Ten seconds left on the advantage. Spurgeon tees one off, and Yossi got it away there. Niederreiter was trying for the redirection. And one shot on net for that power play try for the Minnesota Wild. Predators still lead the game 1-0 on Mike Fisher's seventh of the year. Ekholm back. Matt Cook comes out on him. Ekholm sidesteps him. Shot off the right wall. Held by Pecorino as Cook came out in front. Threateningly so. 11 3 off the clock in the first. 1-0 Nashville. Predators up 1-0. Look there at Captain Shea Weber on the Nashville bench. We talked about the All-Star game. They're going to announce the remainder of the All-Star teams after the balloting is released earlier in the week. And these are potential Predators All-Stars. We will know probably about an hour, maybe after this game is over, when they make the announcement league-wide. And this would not be four bad choices at all to go beat. Of course, we're a little prejudiced. We see them night in and night out on it. Predators break out. Philip Forsberg in off the inboard, played by Backstrom. Tried to throw it right back, and it bounced off Brodziak. Shift out by Cook. Smith trying to get around Brodeen. Brodeen broke it up. Carter down the left side. Got it into the Nashville zone. Off the skate it went. And now back inside the Minnesota line. Not a lot of room in that neutral zone here, Pete. No. So far in the first period, both teams jamming it up, and especially the red jerseys. Here's Matt Cook from the off wing. Flipped it out in front after the miss. And again held by Pecorino. And some pushing and shoving ensues. And right away, Ryan Carter wanted to get a good shove in. Well, trying to establish their territory early. And there's another gentleman, head coach Mike Yo. 2-4-4 in their last 10 games, and I'm sure that he's looking for it. That's what I'm looking for. I want pucks on net. I want traffic to the net. He says, we're not out here this afternoon to make friends. We're out here to get back on a winning streak. Get our team back on beam. Or whatever the other phrase you want to throw out there. Yeah. And they're playing stingily this afternoon, and they had given up 44 goals, Terry, in the previous 11. Yes, and probably that was one of the main topics of concern and conversation of head coach Yo, I can imagine. Off the right board, Jay Weber, and a little fan there, and was created the offside. Jay Weber, Captain Shea, and he was one of the ones, the potential All-Stars. First All-Star, Peter Mallon, for the quota of the uh, game. Which wouldn't surprise anybody in the league. Because they'll want him there for the skills contest. We know that much. <laughs> you know what I'd like, I'd like to do? I'd like to put uh, Weber and, and Yossi out on the ice together with a gun. And to see mm. how, how near behind... Or not Yossi, I'm sorry. Ryan Ellis. Okay. Ellis. And you know what? Yossi too, for that matter, because he's got a pretty good cannon himself. Yeah, he does. But I'd like to, to see... Because we know Weber, and I think Ellis is not far behind him at that time. The OC back to retrieve. 
Weber under the right point. Sure keeps it in. Then it was deflected by Halla. And Fisher got there to make a play to the end board. Wilson couldn't find the puck in his skates. Bennett for Parise. And lunging to get that pass. And trying to really reach for it. Halla, that was next to impossible. Bounces off Halla's stick on the follow-up. And Taylor Beck lugs it out to center. Pass stopped at the blue line. Predators peel back. Brian Suter for Minnesota. Reverse then. And taken now back up ice and trying to get away from that schmozzle there. And the Predators had a little bit of difficulty there and Matt Cullen was able to escape. Cullen returning to the lineup here this afternoon. Puck got up into the body there and now given ahead to Yarncroke. Retrieved to Jokinen. Short side, the miss. Cullen returns it toward Jokinen. The bank for Eckholm. Coming down the right side, Seth Jones. It's Yarncroke to keep in at the point. Shot again, deflected wide of the Minnesota net. Yarncroke somehow got it. Eckholm got it around Prosser. Koivu trying to check Cullen. Then walking over to come after him. Put up the wall. To the blue line, Eckholm has shot, and that deflects away and two skips to the corner, left of Nick Backstrom. Zucker, broken up at the line. Seth Jones breaking in. The shot, and that one is absorbed by Nicholas Backstrom coming out to the left side of his crease. So Seth Jones is on that right side with Eckholm. Here was Ryan Ellis, last game against Dallas Thursday. And he went down, had to go back through the tunnel for attention. And the word we have is it's a lower body injury, which will be reevaluated for his return after the All-Star break. And you have to know, Pete, watching Ryan Ellis in that game when he went down, he was slow getting up. Mm -hmm. Slow getting to that bench and slow getting up. And you had to know the little guy was hurt. Niederreiter was able to avoid the icing call. Colleen with a shot and the rebound put home. Charlie Coyle to the backside there of Pecorini. So at 14-14 of the first period, a play out of the right wing corner develops into the game-tying goal. So the Wild tie it up, Pete, on just sort of a whip after all the good, solid scoring chances, point-blank scoring chances they've had here in the first period. They get one out of the corner with just sort of a desperation shot. The puck just floats in. And as you mentioned, the puck number three comes down and just tosses it towards the net out there. And it ricochets right over to Coyle. Rather, he gets, gets the goal on it, Coyle. But it was just a shot. And how many times you heard them say, shot on net from anywhere is never a bad play. Ricochet right to Coyle, and he puts it home. And he was able to get there in perfect position. Coyle's fourth at 14-14. Score here. With 525 remaining in the period. Rodziak dumps it back in the Minnesota end. Here's Ryan Carter. Shovels ahead for Cook. Played back in the Minnesota zone. Colleen with it. And we have a scrap going on here. Well, Carter wanted to get into one earlier, and now he's with Paul Gostad. This at 14.51, and they're right in the referee's crease. Gostad without his helmet. And Gostad got a couple of good overhand rights in, and now the linesmen move in to separate them. Street Park and Michelle Cormier. So we will be back. Predators and the Wild tied at one. 14.51 off the first period clock, and here is the way that break has got started. Rostad and Carter. So Gostad and Carter go to the box at 14.51. And the Predators coming into this game through 40. And this is the halfway point of the schedule after this one today. The best record through 40 games in team history. Comparing to the 06, 07, and 05, 06 teams. And in our first intermission, we'll take a look back at that 06-07 team, which finished the year with 110 points.
Not too shabby. Well, so the puck comes back. Nice bounce. And thrown to the corner then by Beck. Spurgeon up the board. It came off the backside of Pominville. And then given to Ryan Suter. Rolled behind the Nashville net. Popped up, knocked down, and fired across in front by Pominville. Suter to the corner, and Pominville came up to accept it. Fisher's pass, taken away. Nico Koivu put it down to the corner. Zucker, Pominville back to Koivu. This is that big line we were talking to you about on the opening of our telecast this afternoon. Off the ball. And then taken out of that high traffic area as Yossi springs free Colin Wilson. Wilson quickly closed on there by Spurgeon to the blue line. And across it comes Ekholm to Jones. And that one almost deflected home. You can see it almost fungoed into the net. Jones. And gloved and held by Backstrom. Hey, now it's time for your hot ticket time presented by Hunt Brothers Pizza. Right now, purchase a ticket for the game on Tuesday, January the 13th against Vancouver. While my partner's dancing to the music here. And receive a free hot dog and small Pepsi. To order, call 615-770-700 or visit NashvillePredators.com slash hot ticket time. This offer is good through the end of this afternoon's game. So order now. You done dancing? For the while. Okay. For just a little while. Oh. When I get a Saturday afternoon game, just can't help myself. Howla. <laughs> Backhands it in from outside the line. Meaning really now Seth Jones got it around Parise to center. Going on with Brodeen, and it comes right on the Nashville net. Marine backhands it away from Holla. Somehow knocked down there by Vanek and taken up by Forsberg. Poke checked away from Forsberg, and then Parise sends it back out. Here now is Vanek. Toward Parise, and he lunged and put it right on the Nashville goal. What a chance there for Minnesota. It looked like nothing, and because of Parisi's hustle and speed, it turned into a golden scoring opportunity. No icing here. Up on the right wing board for Nashville. Niederreiter quickly on the play and on Yarncroft. Niederreiter lost control of the puck. Wild, very dangerous at this point. They got one and gunning for another, and that one is covered by Rene. On that last chance, Parisi beat. He comes the full mile, as you said, with full jets on. And Vanek sees him coming. It's a turnover, a quick comeback to Allen. Jones is coming the full mile back. But he happens to miss it. Now, I'm not sure if Jones actually deflected that puck on Parisi, on Rene or Parisi. Either way, Pecorini was the man doing the job on that one. But what it shows you is the quick turnaround and attack that the Minnesota Wilder capable of. You turn the puck over, they're coming right back at you. That was quite the illustration there of transition. Flipped over towards Stahlberg. Backing everything up, Niederreiter. The wall, Prosser, and back to center it comes. Stahlberg is back with Shea Weber. Weber comes in, guns one, wide of the net. High rebound, back to the Nashville zone. Two ten left in the first. Game even at one. Lakers got a goal from Mike Fisher. Charlie Coyle from Minnesota. On the side, broken up at the line by Brodeen. Craig Smith breaks in. His shot wide to the corner. Smith tried to trap it. Right behind the net, Ribeiro for Smith. Smith wheeling, and that one is kicked away. Jabbed out then behind Seth Jones. 95 seconds left in the first. Philip Forsberg steps in, hit there by Foline. His defense partner, Jonas Brodeen. And here now is... Bowling coming up, crossing center and firing it right in the national net. Long pass up ice by Rene. 
And this is going to be icing on Nashville. <laughs> I'm not sure what Pecorino is mad at somebody. We just thought, get this thing out of here. Buck came to him and he says, here, somebody chase it down. Goes all the way down ice. And it's coming back for an icing call. But I have to tell you right now, Pete, Pecorino right now, the score's tied 1-1 with a minute 13 left. It's all because of him. Because you look at the scoring chances. Breezy, first and Niederreiter come in and cook off the wing. And another giveaway, Suter from Parisi, go on down the line. And yep, it's 1-1 thanks to Pecorino. Oh, and Mike Fisher for scoring. Yeah. We're we'll calling Wilson for setting it up. Yeah, let's... Okay, hope check, that's the blue line. It's a team game. It is. <laughs> <laughs> up through center. And this will be an icing. And coming up in our first intermission for you here, we're going to have reaction to the Predators dressing room our Mercedes-Benz of Nashville intermission interview. Highlights and stats. And what's next for Nashville as we look and do a comparison between this year's team to this point and that 2006-2007 Predators team. Interesting. You and I had a good chat about that last night, Bubba. Yeah. It was fun to look back at history and see what's, what's evolved through the years. Isn't it ever? And see what common threads there may be. And how much younger you and I have gotten. It's amazing. Oh, That's yeah. the most amazing yeah, part. Really. <laughs> Put up the boards toward Pommonville and chipped away for Zucker. Wild go for a line change. And he simply passes it to his left. Jay Weber went up the middle to the line and tipped over. Yarn Croke shot, swept it wide. Jokinen takes a swipe. Mm. And the puck's stolen away. The cross ice pass. Take it away, breaking in, and Vanek tried to go behind the back. You question the wisdom of that. He had a shot. Whoa, and the crowd, even the crowd are building in on that one, Pete, on Vanek. He did have the perfect chance and surprised everybody in the building, including the guy coming with him. He didn't shoot it, but a giveaway at the blue line, just inside the blue line yep. by Shea Weber. Yeah, let's and take a look at that. Vanek was off break. to the race on that one. Weber tries to put it across. Vanek read it perfectly, and he was off to the races. He's I mean, he's point blank in on a breakaway. Now, I know he had Parisi follow him. Boy, oh, boy. Absolutely amazing. Stay tuned. Our Mercedes-Benz of Nashville intermission interview will get things started when we return to the Excel Energy Center in St. Paul. 1-1 as we had to start play here in the second period. So time on ice leaders. Yeah. After the first period, Ryan Suter ready for 30-plus. Jay Weber and Roman Yossi won't be far behind. They'll be chasing him. Three of the heavy-duty D-men in the league this season. Vying for that honor. Right now, they're uh, looking around saying, okay, is the door closed? Is the Zamboni off the ice? Drop <laughs> the puck. And here we go with period number two as the puck was stolen. Trying to get it back to Forsberg there was Craig Smith. Slide to the Nashville line. The barrel's pass blocked by Howler. And in ahead on the right wing there of Zach Parisi. Weber comes out from behind the net. I was trying to figure up feet on that when Weber was down behind the net. Whoa! Whoa and Forsberg is shot! And Smith went by and took a swipe but couldn't make contact. We've had some curly shuffles here this afternoon. <laughs> a delayed penalty call coming up as well. Don't go, uh oh, this could be pulling this one. Sometimes, I guess they won't call it. And just spank the puck away like that. And the referee's lining on that talking to. Let's get the call. National number 15, two for tripping. And just before that, Pete, Batram had one float in, hit the glove up and over, and as you mentioned, Smith come roaring in and couldn't get to it, sort of bounced up and over behind So the Wild will get a power play chance here, their second of the game, as Craig Smith takes the seat. Bostad out with Bork. Across the front. Parisi. Along with Vanek. 
And Harmonville, Koivu is on as well with Ryan Suter. So a little reconfiguration from their first. Pulled away low, shot off the shoulder of Rene. Shades, shades of that old Detroit team, Pete. Yeah, shoot from anywhere, behind the net, behind the goal line, wherever. Be alert. So the Wild with the stoppage here. Everybody just let's get around circles. Let's get this Minnesota call. Minnesota penalty, two minutes for high stick. High stick. That's what it was. That's why they all were circling around, waiting for the referee to pick one of them out. And Zach Parisi and Zach will take is the one who he chose. Zach Parisi will sit for two. He gets, he gets the stick up high. Well, I'll take the power. I'll take the power play. I won't argue, but that's... I guess Jonesy was smart enough to duck the head and he just felt the top on his helmet. So four on four now. The Wild, only 37 seconds ahead. The man advantage got one shot. Puck bounced away from Coyle. Forsberg coming back. Lost it while stick handling. Pick back up. Ribeiro. He dealt it back to what was then an open point. Yossi filled that. And now Suter carries to Coyle. Back towards Suter. Suter. Didn't fully control the puck as he broke in tight to Rene. Coyle at the line. 47 seconds remaining in four on fours. Coyle then broke to the net. Zucker with the shot. Broken up in front. Follow-up shot. Deflects up into the netting. 39 seconds remaining in the four on four. You know what, Pete? I'm going to say it again. We've got such good ice out here tonight. Hard times are quick. Watch Suter. He breaks in. He's coming down. Gets a little give and go. Cuts off the one. He gets the puck. It slides. Normally, he would have regrouped that puck and got it. And this afternoon. And a boy. Keep me alert. <laughs> but again, I'm, I'm going to the back. Yes. That, that, that ice out there is thick. That's the good ice to play on. Is it ever? And earlier in the first period, another uh, wild player had a chance to get a good scoring chance and couldn't catch up to the puck. And there, the shot taken by Foley from straight away, glove down. Hey, check out the all-new Lids Pick 6, starting at just $34 per game. This ticket package includes an autograph, Shea Weber bobblehead, $20 Lids gift card, a seventh game for free, and more. Call 615-770-7800. Visit nationalpredators.com slash pick six to order yours today, this afternoon. Do it right now. <laughs> if I say this afternoon enough times, I'll get it. <laughs> Four on four continuing. 30 seconds remain. It's a 1-1 score here in St. Paul as the puck is sent back into Minnesota territory. Backstrom stopped it there for Brodine. Romanville went into a bit of a traffic jam there. They still get it deep in the Nashville zone. Koivu went after it. Behind the Nashville net, Matias Ekholm. Predators about to have a 37-second man advantage. Now power play for the Predators, their first of the afternoon. They've been outshot 17-9. Dipped in, Seth Jones. Ekholm spins against Brodziak. Here's Ekholm. That shot, that was never seen by the goaltender. But it went just a little bit wide. Cook is on with Brodziak. Under 10 seconds remaining in the advantage. Seth Jones with the shot deflected away, and Ekholm took a whack at it. Now Cook skates down ice with it with Brodziak. Cuts behind Brodziak. He goes down. The fans wanted a penalty, none forthcoming. Referees were getting some help from the fans, but not listening. So no shots for Nashville at 30 second, uh, 37 second advantage as that one goes wide. Still a 1-1 score. Weber. Up the left board for Nashville. Held in by Vanek. He tried to pass. Bounced away. And back to center Prosser. Suter's pass tipped by Vanek at the line. Hollow recovers. Taken away and taken in by Cali Yarncroke. He loses. But off the boards at center, too far for Vanek, and it's Yossi inside the Nashville line. 
right? Blocked, blocked into the wild bench. You'd call that neutral zone a mosh pit, wouldn't you? <laughs> yes, Nothing I would. Bodies up there, moving yeah. around, falling down, chasing the puck around. So here's the way they stand in the Central Division, entering play this afternoon. And you see, in particular, how tight at the top it is. And you could even take that Western Conference and put NHL. Yes. And you'd see a nice natural predator on top of the heap. And what have I said before, Pete? There's lots of room on top, but none to sit down. Right. You cannot rest on your laurels. Or anything else. Yeah. No. Stalbert tries to tip it out. Banked off the inboard, back off the Nashville goal cage as well as that one came up right in the mush of Victor Bartley. Uh, hacking and whacking along the board. There's yeah. a battle for you. Who's going to come out on top of that one? Schrader spun off the wall to try to get back to it. He had just been called up earlier in the week from their Iowa Farm Club. To the line, and that one broke it up. It was Coyle getting the shot away, and it deflects from the traffic in front of the Nashville goal. Schrader, Niederreiter, and Coyle. The forwards pressuring the Nashville defense in their end. Well, just they're a, back in that same spot. They were just yep. a while ago, Pete, working along there. Boulder on Boulder, is it not? 522 gone in the period. Trying to get an edge. Neither team can. Early here, the Wild off the blocker, Smith. And then Minnesota decided to turn it around and come on down deep. Again, back to the point. Graphic to the net. And Pecorine finding somehow, some way to pick up the puck. Get enough of it. Put it over in the corner where they go to work along the boards again. Well, in the face-offs in the first period, it was pretty even. Ten and nine for Minnesota. Wins and losses. This one, Nashville gets possession. But Minnesota pressured again from the point. Rodine played it across. Holding comes in. Back behind the Nashville net. And Rene almost gave it right up to Zucker. Colin Wilson breaks out with Beck. Back in pursuit. Bolin, that puck did a little trick on him turning over as he tried to get it out of there. Back in it down for Wilson. Colin Wilson, followed all the way by Brodeen. Keeps it deep. Beck held up as he hit the outside there. And there's going to be a whistle, I do believe, for in, as the net went off. So the net gets off its pegs. 6.05 gone in the second, and this game still tied at one. Thursday night against Dallas, Captain Shea Weber. We go into overtime about 17 seconds in. Yes, Fisher gives him the puck. Bingo. Hello. Game-winning goal in overtime by Captain Shea Weber. And why did we show you that one? Because most overtime goals by active defensemen in the regular season. Mike Green has eight. Captain Weber has seven. And Christian Ehrhoff, the Pittsburgh Penguins, also has seven. Puck is centered, but tipped over for Yossi. As that puck knocked down off the body of Craig Smith, Parisi starts it back out. Right side, Vanek. Breaking to the net there, but being held up. Not able to get his shot, Zach Parisi. They closed on Ribeiro. Taking away that open ice. If that had remained much longer, you could just have envisioned Forsberg or Smith breaking in. But here's Parisi toward Coyle. And then we have a whistle from center ice. I got to tell you, Pete, I've never seen in a game this afternoon so many weird happens where you think the one team has it, they don't have it. The other team gets it, give it back. Ice it's almost stick. Like you take it, I don't want it. High sticking call. And it looks like Mike Rivero. Mike Rivero's hitting over there. The upper. No, I'm sorry. Oh, Greg Smith. Okay. Greg Smith. Sorry, Mike didn't mean to uh, label you. Greg Smith got it for him. Well, he got Mike Smith. Craig Smith. Craig Smith's in the box. Yes. He but they put up the name. Okay. In any case, it's we power play number three for Minnesota. Exactly. Just to clarify it, Minnesota Wild is on the power play. As the Predators break in, however, shorthanded. Parisi, Koivu, 
Suter is back with Pominville as the Predators clear the zone again. Fisher is on with Yarncroke. He'll pick his way in. Goes Koivu. And the puck will be cleared down ice by Seth Jones. The quarterback here, Ryan Suter. To the point, Koivu. Ruizzi wheels it to Pominville. Pominville fading left. Making it Parisi did not have the one-timer right there. The puck slid on it. Koivu. 1-1 is our score. Wild on the power play. The puck comes out and across the line. Break for Nashville. Vanek now a Niederreiter shot. Deflected by Shea Weber. Wild in the midst of changing up their power play unit. And that puck is picked off by Fisher. Koivu gave it right to him. <laughs> Mike Fisher's down there waiting sort of saying, you're going deep, you're going to go across. And as he was pondering it, well, you put it right on a stick. You don't have time to think, folks. I wonder if they're played enough to say thank you. Not very likely. Good question, though. Not very likely. Coming down the left side, Zucker, his shot. Rene had that side covered. Prosser waits at the line. Zucker to the side of the net. Coil into the slot. Power play is over. Rosser a shot, fired it wide, so no shots on net on that third power play for Minnesota. Meantime, Smith was hounding Brodeen there. The Predators have given up just one shot on three Minnesota power plays. So there's a penalty being given. It looks like it's going to go yeah. back against Nashville because possession belongs to the Wild. The referee's hand is up in the air, and I want to respect Arena. Yeah. Prosser's having something to say with Greg Smith. And the referee's having something to say with Bartley. Yeah. So, so Rene swinging his stick and has to maintain control of it. We got Nashville goalie. Two minutes high stick. Okay. So obviously he will not serve it. And Craig Smith is accustomed to sitting over there, so. <laughs> Put back to the receiver. He just vacated it. And unfortunately, accidental. Yeah, after being not seeing Zucker. And uh, referee being called over. Coach Laviolette says he was bent, ducked into the stick. He's claiming that Zucker came around behind. Pecorini had shot the puck. And yeah. On ball so here we go. Watch Pecorino shoots it. And he's shot it. So that's a follow. -up. It's a fine line on that one, Pete, between the coach, Laviolette's, is trying to get his point across. So power play for the Minnesota Wild here. Nice taking the call. Serving on behalf of number 35, Pecorino. Going to clear the puck out. And it comes over where it is passed now ahead of Pominville. Pominville's pass deflected back out across the line. I don't think I've seen a game, Pete, where so many passes have gone awry by both teams that yeah. I have this afternoon. And it's not that they're poor. Uh, I'm telling you, it's just sort of it's amazing here this afternoon as to what's going on. Manic a shot right off the chest, and a rebound was right in that front. That one didn't go awry. That went right at Reno. Yes. That one went a chest. As the puck is back in a low by Yarnbro. Almondville. We go for the dump in route here. Weber reverses behind the net there, knocked away from Vanek. To the blue line, and that got behind Pominville. Cullen continues its pursuit, and it flutters over the glass. With 47 seconds remaining on the penalty. So we take a look again at Pecorini coming out. He makes the shot. 
There's the follow through. And it sticks there. And then Zucker, Zucker just kept coming skating right into it. The play was made. Zucker was the one who came skating into the stick. It, was, it really wasn't Pecorino. He made his play already. He shot the puck through on the follow through with his stick. But in the meantime, we still have to kill off a penalty. 36 Power seconds three. remaining in it. Coyle, who had the tying goal for Minnesota in the first. Rodine keeps it in, but Taylor Beck got right there and ahead for Ole Jokinen. Jokinen skating in that shot, forcing a save on Backstrom. Now there's a great differential for both of these clubs in the power play from what they do at home and what they do on the road. Take a look at that, Terry. Right there. At home, Nashville's 8.2%. On the road, 20.3% for Nashville. Minnesota flip-flopped that. They're 8.1% on the road. At home, they're strong. They're excellent at it. So there's a tale of two cities. Or many cities. Well, oh, it's Minneapolis, St. Paul. Yeah. Two the two twin cities. Niederreiter. Under 10 seconds remaining in the penalty. Niederreiter Zucker in that neighborhood. Bork put it up the wall. Niederreiter takes it. Niederreiter now. Off the stick there of Spurgeon. And the power play is over. As possession continues in the Nashville zone. One shot on net for Minnesota there. And here's Craig Smith who finished serving the penalty for Pecorine. Shovels it in from outside the line. Craig's going back to the bench just to reacquaint himself with his teammates. Yes. Now a backhander by Brodziak. High off the glass. Carter tried to make a play. Taken away Seth Jones. Ribeiro. Right side, Smith the shot, and that one is gloved by Nick Backstrom. 11.49 has been played of the second period. Minnesota and Nashville tied up at one. 1-1 one, one our score, 8-11 to go in the second. Joined on the bench, live by assistant coach Kevin McCarthy. Kevin Temple to this game is really something to behold. Yeah, it's, it's a real fast-paced game, obviously. I think right from the start, uh, Minnesota came out, and uh, their game plan was to get that puck through neutral zone as quick as possible and, and, get, uh, and uh, try to uh, create things in the offensive zone. I thought that uh, we turned the puck over a little bit too much there, obviously, in the first period, and it kind of bit us. And, Kevin, the one thing you have to do is your coaching staff, they show a lot of patience and discipline with some of the calls and the way the action is out there this afternoon. Well, I think, you know, it's, it's one of those games where, uh, you know, it's, it's probably going to come down to a special teams here to, whether you win or lose. So you, you want to make sure that you're not uh, getting the bad side of the referees here. So you just got to <laughs> take what they give you and, and hope, for, hope for that next one. Is know? that a political comment, Coach? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, right. Kevin. Right. Thanks, guys. All right. Assistant Coach Kevin McCarthy. Live from the Nashville bench as the Wild flipped the puck out of their end. Said as a player who was a coach, or a player and a coach. Yeah. The flex in, off for Barrow. Kaleen retrieves. Brodziak flips it over. Carter coming on, and that shot was going, it looked like, for the upper left-hand corner. Fisher, play stopped as he tried to break in. Howla, and that forced an offside just ever so slightly. Fisher and Carter have a combination there. Hey, the Predators look to maintain their top spot in the NHL as they take on the Vancouver Canucks this Tuesday, January the 13th at Bridgestone Arena. Our fans are familiar with the Canucks, I'll tell you. It's a Nissan 2 for Tuesday. Receive two lower-level tickets, two hot dogs, two sodas, and a Preds car flag for $99. Puck drops at 7 p.m. Just call 615-770-7800. Here you go. Thrown back across Bannock. Flags it down. Throws it across off the stick of Rene. Suter follows. Suter, the defenseman. Forcing the play. Back now Vanek, and that shot blocked out across the line. And Vanek, everything is blocked. Fisher doing just a dogged job there. <laughs> Was he ever persistent on that one? He wasn't giving up. And he just seemed to keep getting in the way of the puck. And Vanek, he, was, he actually was the bulldog going after a pork chop. <laughs> Expensive? Yes. Okay. Colin Wilson, Jokinen driving the net. And that shot ricocheted up off the glove of the goaltender in the glass. 
He had two of them going. Jokinen heading for the net, and Yarnkoop heading for the net on that one. Colin they Wilson. throw it in front. Rebound came out high and spun around, but the Wild get control. Parisi knocked out the line. Ekholm off the skate at the blue line. Jokinen bangs it off the end board. Six minutes left in the second. Koivu up the wall it came. Ricocheting off the skates there of Ekholm. Pass to flex in off Zucker. Trying to get posi position there on Zucker with Seth Jones. And again, as quickly as the game is moving, it's difficult to uh, get position on anybody. We have an offside at the Minnesota line. 5.37 left in the second period. Predators and the Wild, as they were at the end of one, tied at one. There you have the assistant captain of the Minnesota Wild, Zach Parise, who lost his father, J.P., earlier this week. And the Predators have the number 11 for the Parise family. Special decal on them for this afternoon's game. And very respectful, Pete, and very, I would say, sportsmanlike of the Nashville Predators. And I had the pleasure of knowing and being a good friend and playing with Zach's father, J.P. You guys were really young back then. Yes, we were. You're talking late 50s, early 60s. And behind the Nashville net, a quick lurch out with the puck. Bartley. Forsberg trying to put it down below Foley, but taken away by Coyle. Coyle, delay, and that shot. There was no redirect and opportunity there as Schrader broke in, delayed. I wouldn't want either one keeping track of turnovers, giveaways, miscues, and sloppy passes in this game because, and I'm going to say it again, the ice is great, great ice. Kevin McCarthy, when we talked to me, alluded to the fact, you know what, the pucks are bouncing a lot also, which will add to that one. But again, what it's doing is giving the goaltenders, it's giving them fits and nightmares for crying out loud. Because the play looks like it's going safely the other way. Suddenly, bingo, it's turned over, turned around, they're coming right back down at you. So expect the unexpected this afternoon. Yes, precisely. Around to the left wing side. Bork got it to the line, not out. All of the keep in. This time, Bork was able to clear it. Rene losing his balance on the trapezoid. Here's Bork after the clear-out pass from Seth Jones. Bork down for Stahlberg. Bork comes out of the corner. Gostat to the front of the net. Jones with the try. That deflected away. Might have been off Stahlberg. As Zach Parisi clears it. Gostad just lobs it toward the corner. Ole Jokinen behind the net. Cullen took a swipe at it. Vanek puts it on the right board. Shift into the Nashville zone by Zach Parisi. Shots 21-12, favoring Minnesota. Cullen flattened it out and put it in low. He then runs into Suter, and Cullen went down hard. Slow to get up. Cullen going to stay in the play, it seems. Now he goes off to the Nashville bench. We'll watch to see if he's able to return. Pretty good shot. On the end wall. Up the boards it comes. And this is going to go on net, negating an icing, which was the original indication. Then Rene covers up. So Matt Cullen, he's being looked at on the bench by the trainers. And why? Because he's heading in on the board check. And he gets sort of taken out awkwardly. He and Suter sort of get the legs tangled up. And as they spun around, Matt Cullen's back sort of went up off against the wall. And that'll leave a mark in a sore spot, believe me it does. So hopefully Matt's okay. He's up and looking around again, but he's going to the boards and... Yeah. Oh yeah, so you're gonna say he just got back. Yeah. Hartley <laughs> onto the right side. Smith took a swing and he missed, but now he gets it back. Passed out in front, bounced away for Brodziak. Golden chance there, but the puck bounced on him. For Smith, as Smith might have hit the pipe as he broke through the left circle. 
Ekholm with a drive. Knocked down in front. Shoveled up by Carter. There's some pretty good chances here at both ends in the late stages of the second period. Colin Wilson nudged it toward the net. On the side wall. Set back for Ekholm. Jones maneuvering his way around, staying away from Carter. Wilson in the trapezoid. That's where he made his play in the first period. That shot blocked, may have broken a stick. Brodziak, yes. And the puck high in the air, played back out by Ekholm. Prosser dumps it in. Seth Jones in the corner. Poked away by Pominville. Koivu to Pominville. That shot stopped as he came in the short side. Brodine. Koivu straight away. And Rene, I don't know how he saw that, but he gloved it down. And now Zucker in a shoving match to the side of the net as he's getting lectured there by Matthias Eckholm. And things heating up on a cold afternoon in Minneapolis. And just before that coming down, nice pass. Ribeiro hitting Smith on the fly. He releases it. And a nice save by Backstrom. He's moving left to right. And then right back down come the Wild. Traffic and Pecorine picking up on that one coming right through. And doing a good screen job with Jason Zucker on that one. So, and then you get into, yeah, how's the family? How are the kids doing? How was your holidays? Let me tell you, I don't know how it was in Long Beach growing up. I'll tell you what it was like in Sweden. <laughs> Exactly. You and the wife ever go over our way. Come on in and visit. Yeah. Where are the days of the good old trash talkers that were really funny? Who was the best? Oh, the one from Detroit that I had in Tampa. Can't think of his name now. I used to stand behind him when I coached him, just to write down what he was saying. Oh, Cicerelli? She's one of them. Yeah. Loved down by Rene going wide of that left post. Hey, be part of a unique experience by entering the Design My Rally Towel Contest presented by AT&T. Entries must be submitted by January the 25th, and voting on the top design will begin on April the 27th. The winning rally towel will be given to all fans on April the 4th when the Predators take on the Stars. Visit nastropredators.com slash rally towel to start designing your towel day. Now, I've been watching and listening to that one being read. Mm -hmm. I was just trying to think, what would you put on a rally towel to win that design? I've been thinking about that. Well, it can't are be we allowed to enter? No. Unfortunately, we are not. But you can adopt a, you know, an assumed name, I guess, Terry. Yeah, but what would you, for a rally towel, that indicates a rally? Like, you know, they just put the hats on backwards, they turn the hats yeah. on inside. But give me something fresh. Well, you've heard me at uh, some various football watching parties. Well, yeah. I can't say that. No, you okay. can't. It's, it's, a <laughs> it's a family show. Okay. <laughs> I understand that. But stop behind the net. Coming up on a minute remaining in the second. Final minute of play in the second period. One minute. Roman Yossi. Long pass to Yolkanen. Right side. Yarncrow cranked one and then a rebound swipe at it by Yolkanen. And the stop is made by Backstrom. Ekholm in the Nashville zone. Seth Jones and now Jokinen puts it in the low. Cullen goes after it following up Ekholm. Turned around by Jokinen. No. Rebound try for Cullen and that's stopped by Backstrom. The two good late scoring chances here in the second period. Nashville applying some pressure. Just can't get Backstrom. But two good scoring chances. Dumped in with 15 seconds remaining. But look at this coach Hitchcock of the St. Louis Blues say. Scoring chances, yeah. I like them, but I want finish. Close, close call. It results in an offside. And again, blasting the puck, yoking and heading to the net, trying to fish out the loose puck that bounced around it. And right behind that, Matt Cullen goes to the net, looking for a rebound, trying to pick it up with Jan Kroak, trying to give him some support. But, did not find it. But a good flourish. Yes. Like that word, flourish? Like 
As that puck is banged in, the flourish expires, as does the second period. Neither side could score in the second. And coming up in our second intermission, well, first we'll have Don Dunphy with the tail of the tape. A little scrap here at the end of the period. Pauline and Colin Wilson wrapped up on the far side. We'll take a look on thin ice from our buddies at Fox Sports 1. Highlights and stats and interview with assistant coach Phil Housley. All of that coming up. Nine shots on net for the Wild of the period. 23 after two. Nine for Nashville. 17 their total. Ah, yes. Might this be a son of Matt Cullen? In the stands here this afternoon, this Junior Predators jersey on. We'll get your microphone turned on here, Terry. Can here. One one the score. And how about as we go into this game, tied at one in the third period, taking a look at scoring levels in the third period over the course of the season. And Nashville Predators, well, they sort of ramp it up. They, they sort of kick in 45 third period goals scored this season. So if you're looking for a plus to start the third period, that's one there for you. Write it down. Remember. <laughs> so ready to face things off here and start the third period. Ribeiro and Forsberg up front for Nashville. Backed by Yossi and Weber. Vanek and Koivu for Minnesota. Suter and Brodeen and underway. Rather, Pommenville, excuse me, on that right wing side. Forsberg steals the puck, a quick shot. Trying to follow it up, and he flings it up over the goal into the glass in the corner. Philip Forsberg right on top of that as it's chipped out by Koivu. And a uh, whistle as the net was uh, dislodged down the Minnesota end. Now, this is the kind of start you want from a youngster, Forsberg. He comes out of the left-hand side. Ribeiro chases the puck. And you got to love this kid. He puts everything at the net, and then he follows through, gets a second crack at it. Mid-air bunt. Just miss it. Take the shot. Follow through. Pick it up. <laughs> His high, eye hand coordination is awesome. And most games you see him doing that, you think, how in the world can you do that? It must all be tennis players. Yeah, all of them. Well, we know Roman Yossi is. Yes. Up the left wing side, angled over by Parisi. Rodin tried to make the turn there. And it's Fisher for Smith, but Parisi got in the way of that. Fisher with some room. Tried to make a cut around, and that slowed things down a great deal. Four on four remaining for over a minute, a minute five, as Smith slung on net. Big rebound given up. The rebound overskated by Smith and sent ahead now to Falk. Falk drives to the net. Parisi, and his shot was held on to by Pecorine. A starting on Monday, next class returns the five-part series tracking the nation's top high school recruits through National Signing Day, Terry. Hosted by Jen Hildreth and Scout.com's Chad Simmons, it's Next Class 2015, presented by Hyundai, premiering Monday at 7, 6 o'clock Central on Fox Sports South. Think they'll call you and I for our expertise? They probably will. I know they will. Keep your cell phone handy. Always. Off the face-off win, it's given to Ryan Suter. Brodeen. Ran into Yarn Croak, and the puck comes away. Seth Jones carrying. Jones across the line. Got a shot on, scooped up there by Backstrom. Still 36 remaining on the coincidental minor penalties called at the end of the second on Colin Wilson and Foley. And Coach Housley in the intermission, Pete, talking to him, listening to him, he said he liked the zone time, he liked the four check. He said, but he have to remember, he says, Minnesota, use the word, is a desperate hockey club. They want wins. They have to get wins. They've lost some tough games. And he says, we have to match that desperation, that intensity. Or be better than 
Pass comes out, and it will be Matt Cullen, who again took a pretty heavy hit late in the second period. Boivu backing off. Cullen lifted over left side. In the corner, Eckholm <laughs> wheeled away. He sort of out leg strength him, didn't he, as it came out in front. It was, it was sort of rather neat. Like those wrestling matches the Philadelphia Flyers used to have with the Philadelphia Eagles. Boivu, as we're back to skating, five aside. Tapped over and into the Minnesota end. Spurgeon sent it in deeply, and there's going to be an icing against Minnesota. Take a look at that play he gave the corner. Eckholm and Spurgeon. <laughs> Eckholm and Spurgeon. Eckholm says, Let's get out of here. Move out. Throws the rear end at him. Down he goes. He can't get up. And Eckholm makes a pretty good play off of it. But Spurgeon's probably thinking, What do I have to do to get the puck off that guy? Well, that just shows you the posterior can be considered a weapon. You know, there's you can say, I thought I had a butt. Yeah, you could <laughs> say that. What if everybody comes back to you? <laughs> I know you did because you're chuckling. But dump back in. Backson goes to face up. Taken off the board by Coyle. Coming on now is Falk. His shot into the trapper there, Pecorine. Hey, the Nashville Predators and Homework Hotline are hosting a school supply drive at Bridgestone Arena this Friday, January the 16th, when the Preds take on the Washington Capitals. Coach Trotz will come back with his hockey club. Requested items include writing utensils, backpacks, calculators, glue, and notebooks. That's Friday, January the 16th, against the Washington Capitals. And a very, very good purpose to do. Yeah, excellent purpose. Rubber approached by Cook. What's a calculator? No, you never needed one. You just <laughs> were able to figure it all out in your head all the time. Yossi working in against Prosser. Carter breaks out on the right wing. Around Stolberg. Now it is Cook to the end board with Shea Weber. Gostad gets over and involved as well. Yossi left side. Tipped in Stahlberg. Stahlberg goes back there to the corner with Foley. Now ripped away from Gabriel Bork. They had a breakaway, oh. they thought, at center ice, and it was Parisi. There was a long bomb going for that one, Bubba. Yo. And that's what he was, that was the guy who was excited. Yo. <laughs> As it comes down the right side. Up on the boards, and this will be an icing call. Seth Jones back to make it official at 3.43. Now, let's take a look at that last play here. Seth Jones read it finally because if he doesn't read that play, come to neutral, neutral zone and getting over there in time, as you mentioned, Zach Parisi is home alone and gone. Good read by Seth Jones backing up, saying, oops, look over your shoulder. what I say? Head on a swivel. Parisi was ready to go off to the Belmont Stakes. He was motoring. Shot by Weber, blocked, and then a follow-up, and Yarncroak scores! Did he change Kelly Yarncroak was able to put in the rebound of the second try, giving the Predators a 2-1 lead at 348. I thought Yarncroak had lost his stick on that one, Pete, and he must have recovered to grab that rebound and throw it in for a 2-1 lead. So right off the faceoff, Weber said through traffic, and it hits Jokinen. And then the rebound comes from, I'm not sure where, what is the rebound hit, but Jan Krok was doing something with a stick when the puck landed. He was the man on the spot to bang it home, so the youngster Jan Krok gives his team a 2-1 lead here early in the third. So it should be Jan Krok, his fifth from Jokinen and Weber Sorry, at 348. Well, block and outlet, Vanek got the stick down. Vanek. Toward Howla and off the boards, and it's flipped back out by Matt Cullen. Well, come back up ice with it. Spurgeon threw it over wide. Parise to his buddy Suter, and that rebound skirted away to the right side of Rene. Thinking wraparound, but then being convinced otherwise. Coming out was Vanek. Howla's try blocked by Seth Jones. And then Jones came over to prevent a wraparound try again. 
And there's a shot deflected away to the corner. Just out toward the line and finally bunted up behind Suter. I'm still amazed, Pete, all these years and all my coaching and playing, I can't wrap my little pea brain around the fact that we leave the defenseman Maytag all alone out the blue line when they're in your zone. Why yeah. do they left alone? They're dangerous out there. Look at most of the plays. Most of your goals come from the defenseman. Either pinching, the shot, or whatever. I still can't figure that one out. Well, the Predators know that. At their last 21 goals, they've got no, no 11 of those. There's, there's an demand. example of it. There it is. Pass goes off the skate of Zucker of Minnesota. Koivu dumps it in. Getting away from Pominville. It's off the left board to center. And Charlie Coyle sends it right back into the Nashville end. Ekholm flips it onto the board. Colin Wilson comes over. They tied up Wilson's stick. And now coming on is Coyle. And responding well again defensively, Seth Jones. Charlie Coyle had one tap in for the Minnesota goal in the first period. Cross ice, straighter. Drilled back in fault. Green goes up that left side, and it goes spinning through to center. Threads, two men overskated. Niederreiter curls, tried to give it right back, and then a follow-up by Coyle is handed by Rene. So it was 6.07, gone in the third. The Predators in front of this one, 2-1, on Cali Yarncrooks, fifth of the year at 3.48. Jones, strong defense. Why? Take a look. Watch this one-on-one -on, -one on Zucker coming down. Says, I don't want the deke. He just takes him. Nice break up. Breezy's on a breakaway. No, he's not because Jones comes across and takes the middle of the ice away. Coyle, two-on-one coming down. Jones says, whoops. I'm back again. Breaks up a great two-on-one -on -one with Coyle trying to make the pass. So Seth Jones doing what we pay him to do. Nice, smart defensive moves. I'm not exactly weak. <laughs> yeah. Everyone contributes. Okay, Derek. okay. Roman Yossi back of the Nashville net. And there went the long pass toward Bork. Still, Bork came in to force Foline. And now Niederreiter back to the wild defenseman. Slowing things down with the stick work there. Gostad tapped in for Niederreiter. Niederreiter. The puck flipped away from him. He recovers. And now Foline is shot. Knocked down in front. Did that get Gostad? Somebody is limping. Somebody has to be limping because that hit, that hit a foot on that shot from the point. Ouch. Roman Yossi. And now Shea Weber as the Predators change up their forwards. Live there of Cullen. And this will be an icing against Nashville. So at least they have fresh forwards out there just before getting called for icing. And then again, Wild coming in, Pete. And on the attack, here comes a shot. Ouch. Yeah, and I think you're right. It was Mr. Gostad getting in the way of that one. I got to admit, when you look over the skates today, man, the skates they build today prevent a lot of injuries. Yes. They are solid. We still get some. But, uh, yes, they do prevent a lot. I like the double runners I played on. <laughs> Buck goes rolling in, and this will be no look, icing look, here. Look at our stat man looking at me. He's only a kid saying, what's a double runner? Yeah. <laughs> Here's Zach Parisi. I should point out, for those of you just joining us, Zach Parisi playing his first game since his dad's passing on a Wednesday. Suter to the net, and that shot took up high, and that was right around the uh, face of Zach Parisi. And again, Pecorini tonight so many times in that crouch, picking up on that puck coming through traffic, and Suter just nice for a shot through traffic, nice screen set up by the Wild coming through, and yet big body of Pecorini somehow finds it through the traffic and picks it up. And it never ceases to amaze me how goaltenders can do that through the traffic. Crouch down, look around, lean in, lean out. Yeah, because at times, Pekka's height helps in that regard. But still, when it's coming in below the crossbar, he has to find a way of sighting it. And there's a quick throw across by Suter. Another, another deflection in front. <laughs> and, and there's another, another one. one. <laughs> Snatched out of the air, that shot by Koivu. 
It's just a matter of who says it first, you or me. <laughs> There's another and another on it. Pecorini again. The busy man here with the wild trying to equal the score out from the from the side. Shooter that is. Another one from the other side. And another one. And I guess the wild said, whoever gets the puck, drill it at Pecorini. Koivu trying to step forward with that one. Gostat tied it. Suter, Zucker, and then flipped out across the line. As the Predators, two centermen out on that D zone faceoff, Fisher and Gostat. Zucker tries to shake free, could not get around Eckholm. Seth Jones up the left wing side, Predators. That wide pass was not available, at least not safely, to Bork. Bork behind the net and Whoa. tried to center, but zipped it a little bit too much past Gostad. That is a zip, Pete. The whole way to the ice zip. He didn't want it intercepted. Well, that took care of that. His goal achieved. Stolen down in the corner, Colin Wilson. Craig Smith comes over to help out. So Wilson oh. working, but now a turnover in front oh. of back Henry scores. The Wild turn it over, and Colin Wilson capitalizes. Predators lead by two at 8.47 of the third. There's the ice again, Pete. It's so slick and smooth. Falk had it. He was in full control. He went to make a little move to go back, change directions with it on some good forechecking by Smith in there, along with Ribeiro. He gets it, slides off his stick, and guess who's standing right there waiting for it to come out to him? It was Colin Wilson. He says, is this a trick? He says, if it is, I'm going to backhand it anyways. So Colin Wilson gets a uh, sort of a gift pass from a wild player, Falk, who thought he had full control. Look at Colin, look at saying, I don't think you're going to get a pass, uh, an assist on this one, because I think it was given to me by them. Yeah. But Colin Wilson, very quickly, the backhand on net. Yarn Groke. And it's sent by Weber on an angle to the corner. Turned over to Yarncroke. Right in front. Almost tipped home there by Jokinen. 3-1 Nashville. Third period goals by Yarncroke, his fifth, and Wilson, his 12th. That was set up also by some good forechecking by Craig Smith. Yes, it was. Pass intercepted at center, then tipped away from Brodeen. Suter is the man whose job it is to go back and get it. The Wild with 10 giveaways this afternoon. And the Predators certainly capitalized on one there, as did Colin Wilson. Paula comes out from the Minnesota line. Nudges it in low. Goes after it. Seth Jones, then Ekholm. Deflected off a Predator skate. Seth Jones recovers and clears the zone. Paula cuts around Vanek. Seth Jones in the corner. He and Parise by there. And Jones got some help off to the side from Mike Fisher. Howler. And then Parise put it right in front for Vanek. And Vanek, quick developing play, wasn't able to deposit that one behind Pecorino. Coming up without a stick there was Taylor Beck. And the Predators, Jones crossing center red, dump it in. Out of the corner. Turning inside Stolberg. Spurgeon cut that one off and nudged ahead for Vanek and across it comes now Zucker. Zucker down the left side, left it. Koivu returns it. Bork. And then Jones knocked down in front. Koivu, but there was play with a high stick. And the Predators get a break there. 10.55 into the third period. Leading this one 3-1. First on a second rebound, Callie Yarncroak. Then on a giveaway, Colin Wilson. 3-1 Predators. 9.05 to go in the third. 3-1 Nashville. We're joined on the bench now by goaltender Carter Hutton. And Carter, how far away is it from Thunder Bay? Because we see some 
Carter Hutton jerseys in the stands here this afternoon. Uh, it's about about six hour drive, but from Thunder Bay, that's a that's a short one. We're used to that. We're a little isolated, so getting down here, it's good to see some some familiar faces for sure. Nice to have your own fact up here, big guy. Yeah, hey, watching can... this game, Carter, up there, Pete and I are just sort of amazed at the number of turnovers and giveaways by both teams on this ice tonight. Yeah, hasn't this really afternoon. Been, hasn't really been a clean game, that's for sure. You know, we're a team that we pride ourselves on, you know, getting pucks in deep and not turning pucks over. In the first period, I thought we turned a lot of pucks over, and, and Pex made a lot of big saves and keep us in this game here. Oh, there's another one right there. Yes. And, uh, and you know, I, I think tonight both teams are, you know, they're a desperate team, and, and they've the standings only show how good they are, and I think it's been a great game here. We kind of settled in a little bit better. Yeah, they're a club that had to fight the mumps, and no club was afflicted more heavily than they were, losing five defensemen at one time or another. Yeah, it's tough. That's uh, you know, especially you're losing them for a while, and, and in those are days you're off ice, you're kind of quarantined by yourself, and you're not staying in shape, so it, it, it's hard to get back into it right away. Here, and uh, I think we've done a good job as the game got on here, especially in the third here, getting a couple big goals. Well, Carter, thank you for the visit as always. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. All right, Carter Hutton with his, uh, as he said, his Huttners, who came down from Thunder Bay. <laughs> Buck is deflected in front, whoa. and Forsberg going to the net. Backstrom goes flying. Stick goes flying. So heavy collisions have really been the order of the afternoon, Terry. Wow, and both teams going, I hope, Backstrom and Forsberg are okay because they both got tangled. We'll take another look at it, and he's coming through traffic, and Forsberg is looking away from the goaltender yep. as Backstrom is following the play also, as a goaltender would be doing. And they don't see yeah, each other at all until it's really too late. And, and Forsberg is being Berg penalized for it. Really collided with the goaltender coming across. And in fairness to Forsberg, both them, he and Baxter, was watching the puck go where it was going. And on a call like that, it's like Baxter's coming out to play the puck. And he takes the lane away from Forsberg. And Forsberg can't put the binders on. I mean, he's coming full force. There's no chance for him to hit the brakes on that one. But Forsberg does get a penalty for it. Power play number five for the Wild. Three shots on four previous man advantages. And the puck goes sliding back into the Minnesota zone. 3-1 Nashville the lead. These two teams traditionally play very tight games. Parisi slapped away from him. Koivu rolls it over toward Vanek. Vanek and Gostet were there together. Now it bounces off Gostet and quickly fed to Suter. His shot, rebound left in front, and Weber is able to clear with a backhanded swipe. And Pecorini again finding a way to get in front of that puck, Pete. And here we go, another. I'm telling you, this game this afternoon is weird. For not being able to control the puck. And we don't think it has anything to do with the time of day, folks. No. Can't see there's a full moon out yet. I hope not anyway. Fisher in the corner with Koivu. Coming away from the left corner. Passed out to Suter by Vanek. Vanek back to Suter. Looking to Parise. Suter. And that one is trying for the deflection. Tipped up high by Koivu. Flipped around by Pominville. Bounced on Parisi there a little bit. They're bouncing everywhere. I mean, that puck, they're alive. We don't know what, are they not frozen? Is it the ice so hard? What is causing it this afternoon? There, Koivu had trouble turning to get back to the puck. 30 seconds remaining. The power play in Pominville almost lost it there entirely. Man. Pominville runs into the referee. Here's Suter. Throwing it toward the net, deflected up high. And taken and cleared down ice by Seth Jones. Nice play by Seth Jones because they sure needed that to relieve the pressure. The Wild were throwing at him on that power play. Off his skate, down to his stick, down the ice. Here comes Zucker to Niederreiter. Niederreiter is stopped, and that's it for the power play. Two shots on net for Minnesota. They continue possession in the Nashville zone. Falk blocked across to the Predators' defensive right side. Niederreiter, and he was hammered down there by Shea Weber. Brodeen, and Spurgeon couldn't handle that cleanly. He now is the guy who finished serving the penalty. Philip Forsberg, 
He takes the feed from Yossi. Forsberg shot, and that one smothered there by goaltender Nick Backstrom. 14-30, gone in the third. Predators three, the Wild one. Now to bring you our Bridgestone performance moment of the afternoon. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And brought to you by the youngster, Jan Krok. Yes, he does. He gets the goal. He's hooked. Gets control of the stick again. Makes it happen. That translates Jan Krok into the iron hook. Yes. He was being hooked while he scored the goal, Bubba. Thankfully not by iron. Exactly. Five and a half a to go in regulation. Fight, maybe. Yes. There's a shot taken by Volchenkov and a rebound. Smith tried to send it by on the backhand. Coyle headmans the puck. Peter Ryder's shot, loved and held by Pecorino. 14.52. Off the clock in the third. The shot still favoring Minnesota. Now 31-26, which means in the third, they have outshot the Predators 8-9. Or 9-8, excuse me, the Predators out shooting them. But that's how tight this has been back and forth. And we, and we talked about turnovers, giveaways, however you wish to. The possession of the puck has not been a strong point for either side. Oh, you are politically correct, Bob. I'm telling <laughs> you right now. That was smooth. That's the way you dug a hole and dug out of it. Luck is thrown in front for Koivu. What a stop by Pecorine. Forgets the one off the back of the leg. That one was absolutely fantastic. Zucker's pass tipped away. Pominville tries to make the play on it. Yarn croak. He was tied up, so Shea Weber got it. And now Weber, the pivot man, as they break into the zone. And the shot by Cullen is held by Backstrom. How many ways can you say it, Pete? Pecorini again to the rescue. Koivu. All alone in front of the net. Nobody picks up on him. First shot, second shot, point blank off the side. And Pecorine scooting over to his side, still maintains the sight of the puck. And koivu has got to be shaking his head saying, where did that big guy come from? Yeah, great question. So as this game has worn on, Colin Wilson has been moved onto the Ribeiro Smith line as they were for this face-off. And then Ribeiro got in the way of the pass from Parisi. To center and tipped out of play right between the benches. So you have to know, Pete, this game's about four and a half minutes left to go in. Still a lot of hockey left, but at the end of this game, you can sure put a package together of Pecorine saves this afternoon. Pecorine saves, and as we've already shown as well, Seth Jones. Yes, defensive saving. Defensive as well. that he has had this afternoon here. And one play that will stand out to me is Vanek dropping a pass on a breakaway. Here's Parisi. Did you know that 15 minutes that Pecorine can save you 20 saves? <laughs> Sometimes more. <laughs> There's Forsberg breaking out and breaking in with Beck. Dropped it back for Weber to Forsberg. Rolled off the toe of the stick. Another one, Pete, we said. How many times he said rolled off? Just left his, the stick. It's happening to both teams. Beck in the trapezoid. Bounced off the stick there, Brodine. Then Coyle. And getting in very poor position there, Foldine, who finally lobs it out. Off the skate of Forsberg. Comes in again from the right. That shot took off over the glove of Backstrom. Schrader down the right side. Dumps it in the Nashville zone. 340 remaining in the third period. Predators up 3-1. Gostad's pass at center. Suter was there waiting for it. Holler down the left side. Toward the net. Picked up by Rene. And again, coming back down the other way. Weber and Forsberg combined. A nice little give and go. Forsberg carries the puck. Little drop pass. Webb says, here it's back again. He just goes to make the save. Puck rolls. Backstrom goes with a semi poke check on him. But nice communication give and go between Weber and the youngster Forsberg on the last attack on the wild net. Predators get control of the faceoff. Lobbed by Seth Jones. And Spurgeon's pass was blocked. He retreats. Stahlberg in deep on him there. And that tipped inside the Nashville line. Picked up Meter Rider, but couldn't get behind. Matthias Eckholm. 
Flip back to the Minnesota zone. This will be an icing call. Yes, on the Predators. So forget about the change, guys. Come back out. Got to get that lollygag rule back in effect yeah. again, Pete. Come on. Yeah. I think the referees are forgetting about that. We'll be taught them about the lollygag. And we were able to lecture some of the referees last night. Yeah, we did. We had a nice chat with them. <laughs> Referee Dvorsky. Who I informed him and reminded him that when I played junior hockey, his father used to referee my games. There's a quick shot spurge and a broken stick on the ice for Gostad. A nice frontal attack by <laughs> Bork on that one to block the puck and then stay on top of the guy. Saying, no, you're not getting your own rebound. Tipped in from outside the line by Brodziak. This, who knows, might be the last shift for this line for Minnesota. Brodziak and Cook. But I think they'll want a little bit more offensive ability out there. Cook. I think in the stands here that Colin Wilson just got away with the trip. <laughs> Whoa. -oh. Yeah. Cook was trying to entice yes, he was. Colin Wilson into something. Now Shea Weber comes over and Cook doesn't want to entice him into anything. Oh, there we go. Oh, no. Now he goes back at it. Gives him a jab. And some pushing and shoving at center. As Brodziak is down by the blue line. And Cook and Shea Weber engaged there. And Shea Weber gave him the old what for. Well, Cook was the one who went and now yeah. Ribeiro and Brazia went after Shea Weber. And Weber says, well, if we're going to go, we're going to go. And then I'm not sure who would them be. The other two went at it. Okay, Weber has been escorted to a seat in the might box. Have been Yossi might have been the one. Well, Seth Jones was out there. And Seth and Cook just went down the runway to the wild dressing room. And I imagine we'll lose Weber possible. He was angry. Yes, he was. He had... You don't want to get the big bear riled on that one. And they sort of come in the neutral zone. They attack and Cook will cross and gives him a little shot with a stick. Weber retaliates with a stick. And then Webb says, cross check. That ain't what exactly what I had in mind. Not a few overhand rights made him feel better. Yeah, and then a couple other ones got involved in it. Nothing dramatic. So it'll be interesting to see how this all plays out with 205 remaining in the third period and a 3-1 lead for the Predators on this one. And I think Paul Dvorsky and Chris Lee were talking it over, the Coach, referees. Coach Laviolette will be telling his guys, fellas, 3-1, just play smart hockey for two minutes, keep the pressure up, keep it going down. Don't get fished into anything dozy. Weber's heading down the runway now himself. So we lose Weber. They lose Matt Cook. Not exactly a fair. Not an even trade. Not no. an even trade in my mind, I'm thinking. So Mike Fisher was in on the uh, And uh, Cook gets an extra minor for high sticking. And he, that's what really irritated uh, Weber, I think, when he cross-checked him in the face. Yes. Minnesota number 24. Matt Cook, two minutes high sticking and five for fighting. Did one of the linesmen get nicked too? Because I believe five. so. Yeah. So we will wait for the official call. By the looks of it, Nashville is going to get a power play. 1755. And Howla will serve the minor penalty. Added on to Cook, Predators get their second power play of the afternoon. They lead the game 3-1. They did not get a shot on net with their power play in the second period. Still trying to sort everything out here. Well, now they exchange Niederreiter for Howla. In the penalty box. Howler was the first one sitting there. You know, in this situation, I don't know if I'd want to lose Niederreiter's speed. They put him in the box, eh? Yeah. Whoa. Ooh. After initially putting Howler in, and there's one tipped up out of play. Predators had the right idea. Traffic in front of Backstrom. 
And now we're down to a minute 58 remaining in regulation. It was 1-1 one, one after one. Neither side could score in the second. Predators have two here. Yarncroke and Wilson in the third period. Buck taken out by Koivu. He's on with Zucker. Koivu fan trying to set it up. Coming on Falk. Knocked down in front. And Rene is able to hold him out. And the Wilds still coming at you. They've not given up anything yet. And driving to the net, trying to make something happen. With Jason Zucker. See what he could get. Cut the lead. Down three to one. Now, now we have Howla and Coach Yo is gonna have a a decision is he ever going to pull his goalie but I mean yeah. the match short as it is so all he does is even up in the manpower with that oh, we all know Patrick Law would have pulled him by now right oh yeah Buck taken oh, away by four, Beck four minutes ago <laughs> <laughs> he'd have had him out Buck with a long clear to center and what behind the play we got another one going Fisher, Fisher is absolutely enraged somebody he is Holy absolutely Lewis. enraged with Prosser Wow. And not very often you see Mike Fisher that agitated. Prosser's an agitator. He yes. is one that will do it. He's been known to do it. But Mike Fisher, not very often. And wow. Boy, if you grab somebody and want to dance, be willing to dance. It still happened behind that play. And now here you go. Yep. Fisher was not wasting Those are any pistons time. working there. Whoa. Fisher and Prosser. So they're excused for the balance of regulation anyway. Five minutes at 1828. There were five minutes called with Weber and Cook at 1755. Plus, Cook got the minor for the high stick. Back in the Nashville end. Philip Forsberg skates out with the puck. Forsberg holds up. The pass was tipped, but Ribeiro handles. Ribeiro played a little catch there with Seth Jones. Forsberg to the front of the net. It rolled away from Smith. There's one knocked down, and now Forsberg stopped it with this gate. We'll have another try, perhaps. Takes it wide. One minute remaining. Getting in the way of that one is Falk. Ribeiro towards Smith. Forsberg tried to get to it to play it, and Falk is able to clear. Under 50 seconds remaining in regulation. Predators lead Minnesota 3-1. Last time in here in December, an overtime win for Nashville. Matias Ekholm carrying the puck behind the net. The fans would like to see a little more action here. Doing the Predators' deliberate approach at this point. Good old days of basketball, Pete, when you can yeah. do that. That's right. Here's Forsberg, lost control of it. Zucker breaks out. Zucker tried to get there around Yossi. Zucker desperately wanted to get possession as Rene was lost to the side of his net, threw it out in front. Now a try by Falk, and Rene, standing up straight, stopped that. Smith with Forsberg driving to the net, but time runs out. And the Predators have themselves another win. Of course, and a little end struggle end down at the end. end. Controversy now at the far end. So the Predators win this one, three-one over Minnesota. And the Wild finish up with 37 shots on Pecorino, 14 in the third period. The Predators had 10 in the third for a game total of 27. And on Nashville, at the halfway point of the season, 28. 9-4, and four, good for 60 points. Predators win it. Stay tuned. Our post-game edition of Predators Live is coming up in a moment.